Hello, this is Carrie from Cookbook Divas, and I could not find this book on Amazon, so I bought it on Barnes & Noble, and it got here in about a day and a half. Love it. Thank you, Barnes & Noble. It is Parwana story, or Recipes and Stories from an Afghan Kitchen. I love Afghani cooking, at least the vegetarian parts that I can have. I started reading Afghani cookbooks back in my old college, my alma mater, San Diego State University. I was there in the 80s and early 90s. And I'm totally excited to check this out. It is by, oh, I'm going to clobber their names. Hmm. Dirk and I, Ayubi. Recipes by Farida Ayubi. Did I say that right? Okay, let's check this out. I love Afghani food. And I have not had dinner yet, so if I start drooling over the cookbook, I apologize. Ooh, starting off really pretty. It is from Interlink Books, an imprint of Interlink Publishing in Massachusetts. Okay, ooh, very colorful, as I would expect. I'm going to need my glasses for this one because it's a big font, but it's on a blue background. Contents, Chapter 1, Before... Parwana, Chapter 2, Roots and Belonging, Chapter 3, The Dissipation of a Dream, ooh, that sounds depressing, Chapter 4, The Plight of the Displaced, Chapter 5, The Movable Feast of Culture, and then it'll end up with After Us. Family dinner. Everyone, it's very colorful. And I'm not seeing any faces covered. Hmm. Prelude. What you seek is seeking you. Rumi, a 13th century Persian poet and theologian. Oh, Parwana is a restaurant. I'm not going to read this whole chapter intro, but uh, let me. It starts off with, my family never had any grand plan to be in the restaurant game. Parwana began with my mother, Farida, pictured left and her intuition that, as migrants, it was increasingly important that we preserve the customs, flavors, and essence of our Afghani cu or, excuse me, Afghan cuisine, and also share it with those in our new home. She carried with her a generationally ingrained love for her traditional food and the rituals that sit alongside it. This, combined with our experience as displaced people, witnessing firsthand the scattering effects of war on Afghanistan's memory and culture, coaxed Parwana into being. Oh, lovely. I'm looking forward to reading this. Chapter 1, Before Parwana. The cross-pollination underpinning, excuse me, underpinning civilization. So lots and lots of reading, food history, history of Afghan, which I know nothing about, so I'm looking forward to it. The ritual of Noraz. Among the first few recipes in the chapter are some dishes usually prepared to come up commemorate Noraz, a New Year celebration that is significant through Afghanistan, Iran, and across Central Asia. Pardon me if I mispronounce the name of the holiday. Here's our first recipe of the book, char masala. Char masala translates as four spices, but rather than literally meaning a blend of four spices, it generally refers to a mix of multiple spices, which can be used as a flavor base for many different dishes. So this recipe has a whole bunch of stuff I personally can't eat because I'm allergic to cardamom and cinnamon. But the rest of you could enjoy this. Coriander, cloves, cumin seeds. Ooh. And we know that masala means half miwa. Literally translates as seven fruits. I'm going to learn a lot from this cookbook. Sabzi, a type of spinach and lamb curry traditionally served on Nora's alongside a rice dish called Chala or Chala. I don't know how to pronounce any of this. Masti Kanagi. Uh, cups, six cups of whole milk, dried bay, dry bay leaves, tablespoons of Greek style yogurt. Ah, that looks very comforting. Ooh, I would guess that's non, but it's called Colche No Rosy. I can't show you the whole book. I'm just flipping through it. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Jalabi. I thought a jalabi was something you wore. Okay. Oh, this is beautiful. It's so colorful. Here's all of the foods we just learned to make in the other chapters together for the feast. Love it. Love it. Very nice photography. 
Mantu are small steam dumplings intricately folded by hand. That sounds like something I need to take a class to learn how to do, but I love these step-by-step -step photos. Oh, this is gorgeous. A shock. Okay. Bolani. I'm guessing that is bread that's different than naan. Every culture has its own awesome bread, doesn't it? And here's the way it's supposed to look when you're making it. Ooh, I'm going to try that. Okay, I'm trying to skip ahead to another chapter. Roots and belonging. Let's take a look. Afghanistan emerges from the mists of history. Okay, history, history, food history, etc. And then we go to a recipe for... Guys, this is hard to pronounce. I'm so sorry. Tokmi, Banjaromi. How'd I do? Sunflower oil, yellow onion, garlic cloves, ripe tomatoes, red chili, eggs, ground pepper, cilantro leaves. Yum. There's a lot of this stuff that, oh, it's Afghan breakfast eggs. Oh, see up here, it tells you what it actually is. Durr, I wish I'd known that in the first chapter. <laughs> Kebabi Siki, lamb skewers. Okay, this is going to make this chapter look through a lot easier for me. Lamb kebabs. Okay. Can't show everything. Lots of kebabs in this chapter. Turmeric and yogurt braised chicken. That sounds good if I eat meat. Yogurt braised lamb. Pan cooked lamb kebabs. Beef patty kebabs. Okay, now we're now we're okay. Red chili chutney. Oh, I didn't know they did chutneys in Afghanistan too. Here's the way it's supposed to look. I'm loving the photography in this book. Very colorful, very delicious. Flower halwa, semolina halma. Okay, and another beautiful picture, pomegranates. I'm sure you've all had pomegranates before. I'm hoping to grab another chapter, The Dissipation of a Dream. This is one that sounded depressing. Final Footsteps on Ancient Lands. Yep, we're going to learn a lot. The Soviets are being mentioned. Here's a table full of delicious looking treats, perhaps for a special occasion. I am definitely not giving this cookbook away. It's earning a place on my shelf. Plain rice. Rice with carrots and raisins. I would call that jeweled rice, but what do I know? And orange rind rice. I learned how to make something similar in a Persian Iranian cooking class, not Afghani. Sticky rice. A lot of cultures have sticky rice. Sticky rice with lamb. Kofta shella meatball curry with rice. I thought kofta was an Indian word. Mung bean rice. That, oh, the pictures are gorgeous. I love this. Are you intrigued? Are you going to buy this cookbook? I am glad that I did. From left to right. Oh, this looks delicious. Look at that feast. Can you imagine sitting down to dinner or lunch and here's this table full of all this good stuff? Afghan style jello called magoot. Cornstarch, sugar, rose water, coloring, hot water, Slivered pistachios and dried rose petals. Of course, no gelatin. Thank you, because I'm vegetarian. Beautiful. Oh, I don't want to spoil the whole, whole book for you. I have to find the next chapter, and it helps that the pages are colored. What is this? Elephant ears. Mm -hmm. Not the kind you get at the fairground, but really good ones. Fried cardamom cookies. Oh, if I could eat cardamom, I would snap those up. I just have a little allergy. No big deal cream rolls. Look how beautiful that is. I'm guessing pistachios. Was I right? Was I right? Oh, dried rose petals. Ground pistachios. Yep. Oh, this is a treat to look through. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. Afghan milk fudge. Probably not the first thing I would grab off a dessert table, but that's interesting. Okay. Let's get to, oh, walnut cookies. I That's interesting because I've had those in my Iranian cooking classes too. The plight of the displaced. More history, reconciling binaries, the ego monsters, transitions, Pakistan. We're going to learn, oh, they went to Australia in 1987. Oops, I think I skipped, yes. Okay, braised eggplant with yogurt dressing. I would make that tomorrow night if I have time. Yum. Dal lentil curry, very similar to India. I did not realize there would be so many similarities. <gasps> Cauliflower curry, yum. Potato curry, mm -hmm. kadu barani, braised pumpkin with yogurt dressing, very autumnal, right? 
something called nakot or nakot chickpea curry i'm gonna say nakot it sounds more elegant lamb curry skip 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 chicken curry i bet that looks good to you guys that eat chicken this is phenomenal <gasps> mixed mushroom curry yay that one's for me this is fabulous oh and here is John E. Alma yogurt and cucumber dip, which we would call tzatziki in Greece or labni in the Mediterranean. Savory yogurt drink. Rose and pistachio ice cream. I wish I liked the flavor of roses. Ginger and walnut ice cream. So. Last chapter, the movable feast of culture. A mirror to ancient truths and changing times. And pecora? vegetable fritters. Oh, look how they spell it. P-E-K-O-W-R-A-H. But in India, it's Pakora, P-A-K-O-R-A. Deep fried vegetable fritters. Who doesn't love deep fried food? I did not realize. I'm going to have to look on a map and see why Afghan and India are so closely aligned. They're probably right next to each other. And I don't know because I'm an uneducated American. Milk tea. Oh, tea time tradition. Very important. Yes. Mung bean soup. Someday I'll like mung, be mung beans. Today is not that day. Thick soup with noodles. I was wondering if we get some soups. Yes. These look really good. Spiced pickled vegetables. Mm -hmm. most, most cultures have some kind of pickling tradition, right? Preserved quince. Gorgeous. Oh, acknowledgments. This is incredible. Barwana. I definitely recommend this book if you're interested in Afghan or even Iranian. Iranian cuisine. Five stars. Love it. Thanks for watching this with me. You can see more cookbook look-throughs on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube under Cookbook Divas.